minutes. Securing LO2 topping. Atlas tanks to flight pressure. 250. FTS internal. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus 2 minutes, 27 seconds and counting. The countdown is on track as we proceed towards T-0. Once the rocket lifts off, it'll take approximately 78 seconds to reach Mach 1, or the speed of sound. Two minutes. Vehicle internal. 155. Launch sequence to start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LH2. FCS launch enable. FTS armed. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus 1 minute, 30 seconds, and counting. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. 20. Orcas ARP. FCS count started. One ten. Vent valve locked. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus one minute and counting. Status. Range green. Forty. Stable at step three. Twenty-five. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go GPS. Twenty. Fifteen. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus ten. ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. We have ignition. And we have liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket, carrying the fourth GPS-2F satellite for the United States Air Force. The Global Positioning System provides worldwide positioning, navigation, and timing services for military and civilian users. You'll be hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Heard you want to perform well. And dance. You look good. Throttle down, right on schedule. Your response looks good. Current altitude is 10.2 miles. Downrange distance is 4.8 miles. Current velocity is 18,000 or 1,858 miles per hour. 
range track shows the vehicle progressing right down the middle of the corridor. Booster engine continues to operate very well. Pump speeds are good, injector pressures are in band. Coming on closed loop uh, steering. And we have begun uh, Q Alpha limited steering. Vehicle body rates look good. Small roll pointing bias. Engine continues to operate well. And the RCS pyro valve has fired. That system's pressurizing up the flight levels. Signatures look good. Currently accelerating at 3.6 Gs. All systems are stable. Tank pressures look good. And the booster has throttled down on schedule. Engine response is as expected. Coming up on our 5G throttle segment soon. Currently accelerating at 4.9 Gs. Copy that, uh, 5 Gs right now. Engine is throttling to maintain 5 Gs. We have boost phase cooldown underway. And we've throttled back to 4.6 Gs in preparation for BECO. Loose phase cooldown is complete. And we have BECO. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros. And stage separation. We have locks and fuel pre-start. The chain 2 purge fern is underway. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Now looking for payload fairing jettison. And we have indication of brake wires on the payload fairing. Range track shows the Centaur right down the middle of the corridor. All systems look good at this point. Centaur has been commanded to oxidize a rich condition for the early portion of this 12 minute 45 second burn. Our steering is enabled. Fuel tank pressures and ox tank pressures are looking good, have vented down as expected. Current altitude is 118 miles. I'll copy that update. Uh, it's 139 miles. Downrange distance, 432 miles. Velocity is 11,303 miles per hour. Range track continues to look good. And Centaur PU is now controlling in a closed loop mode. However, it continues to request an oxidizer rich condition. RCS thruster warming firings are underway. Signatures look good. Our all 10 performance is nominal at this point. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 6 minutes, 6 seconds into the flight. Marty Malinowski confirmed payload fairing jettison, and all systems continue to operate nominally. The mission is in the first of two Centaur engine burns. Our next event, Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur about 11 minutes from now. This is Atlas Mission Control at 6 minutes and 28 seconds into the flight. We've just heard Marty Malinowski report the successful execution of the events comprising the early portion of tonight's mission. Our next event, Miko-1, our main engine cutoff, will occur about 10 minutes from now. That way.
I'm now joined by Lieutenant Travis Pond from the Air Force's 45th Space Wing Launch Support Squadron. Lieutenant Pond, thanks for joining me. It's great to have you here for this evening's launch. Thanks, Steve. It's great to be here, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to see Atlas V launch with GPS 204. I've worked with this mission for several months now, and it's, it's a pleasure to see it go up. Great. We've just seen a great liftoff of the Atlas V rocket, and like all missions, you have other members of the uh, 45th Space Wing. You've been working for quite some time now to get to this day. Can you describe how you're feeling? Sure, Steve. I'm really excited. Um, it's a great time to see rockets go up, and um, our mission is successful, so I'm very excited. Um, as you mentioned, the 45th Space Wing has been working on this mission for some time. Um, our partners are ULA, the Aerospace Corporation, and uh, GPS Directorate, and it's a big moment for all of us. Of course, the Air Force's work isn't finished yet, as we have a long mission ahead of us. The Atlas V launch vehicle will deploy the GPS 2F4 satellite directly into medium Earth orbit, approximately 11,000 miles above the Earth's surface. That separation and deployment will occur a little more than three hours from now. Lieutenant Pond, uh, could you explain the role of the 45th Space Wing in today's launch? Sure, Steve. The 45th Space Wing's vision is to be the premier gateway to space. We support all space launch activities at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Several groups within the 45th provide this support. The 45th Space Launch Group includes the 5th Space Launch Squadron and the 45th Launch Support Squadron. The Launch Support Squadron specifically helps ensure the payload is ready to perform its mission once it reaches orbit. To accomplish that, we oversee all of the work done once it arrives here at the Cape. That work includes supporting facility maintenance as well as an Air Force Lieutenant in the Engineering and Career Field and an Aerospace Engineer. This triad reviews contractor procedures months before the arrival of the space vehicle onto the Cape and together they observe every task between spacecraft arrival and launch. In short, we provide a robust insurance against space vehicle anomalies. The 5th Space Launch Squadron provides the same oversight for launch vehicle activities. In addition to the 45th Launch Group, the 45th Mission Support Group provides resources for flight safety, range instrumentation, infrastructure, and scheduling required to support and assure space launches. And finally, the 45th Operations Group supports launch with weather forecasting and range operations. Lieutenant Pond, on launch day, safety is a number one priority. As you just described, the pre-launch processing is very rigorous. What steps does the 45th take to protect the general public? Steve, safety is our number one priority. We ensure that launching mm -hmm. rockets is as safe for the public as flying commercial aircraft overhead. Ten days before launch, we issue a notice to airmen and mariners, or a NOTAM, alerting them of an upcoming launch. The NOTAM provides guidance to sailors and aviators that might be planning a trip that could be impacted by launch corridor restrictions. The launch corridor is the path of the rocket over the ocean. Prior to launch, the operations group also provides key analysis to determine fallback lines at Cape Canaveral. These fallback lines establish appropriate distances from the launch itself to ensure the safety of personnel and resources. We also provide the launch period weather forecast. On launch day, the mission, mission support group clears the surveillance area con and establishes roadblocks. Again, this is all in the interest of public and launch team safety. Well, thank you, Lieutenant Pond. That's great information. I appreciate a glimpse into the role of the 45th Space Wing in today's launch. Our next milestone, the main engine cutoff, or MECO-1, will occur approximately six and a half minutes from now. While we wait for that next mission event, let's take a look at video highlights of the important capabilities of the GPS-2F block satellite. The Global Positioning System is a marvel of the modern age. It consists of more than 30 GPS satellites 